Hello and welcome back. In this video, we're going to be covering some uh, string data type. Uh, string data type will be split into this video and one after. So please watch both of them uh, when you can. So to go over what we have covered in the previous videos, so far we have met uh, integer and float objects. Um, but normally we have to interact with lots of text data for descriptions or uh, file handling uh, and so forth. And therefore, uh, we want to uh, cover what kind of um, string uh, operations that we can do and how to interact with a bunch of characters uh, in Python. So basically, when I say a string, it is a sequence of characters. Right, so hopefully it's uh, easy to get go. String literals, a uh, literal is just a constant. So for example, 10 in Python is an int literal. 23.5 is a float literal. Okay, so if I have a bunch of characters, uh, then that's just a, a string literal in Python. Um, to create strings in Python, we have a few options. So uh, here are the three options that you can do, uh, kind of four options really, um, but the most widely used are the first two options where you create a string using a single quote or you can use a double quote. So we're going to do a demo. New page. Okay. So remember, we can interact through the shell or we can write a code and then um, run it to load uh, all of its namespace into the shell. But if you aren't clear with that, please watch uh, the previous video. So let's create some uh, strings. Greeting equals oh, single letter. Hello. Enter. So this means I created a variable uh, named greeting and now it has been added to um, my dictionary. So you can quickly check that oh, locals. And here I have a variable called greetings uh, with the value hello. Okay, so if I say greeting, uh, it will show me um, hello in here. Okay, I can do the same thing. So let's create another one. Greeting two. Let's create a greeting two equals hello. This time it's encapsulated in the double quote. Okay. Greetings two will also. Uh, I have a typo. Don't worry about that. Greeting two will also show me hello. Um, whenever Python displays a string literal, uh, it will show you inside a single quote. But it doesn't matter. Um, whether you create them in a single quote or double quote, uh, they both uh, create string literals. And of course, greeting equals, we can create it with triple uh, hello. Okay. Greeting. It also contains hello. So now we know that it works and you can also try for the triple double quotes. So what is happening uh, inside our memory space when we create this variable called greeting uh, with string letter hello? Well, as you know, when we create a variable, it will be added into our uh, dictionary. So a greeting, um, well, in this lecture example, it says, hi there class. So basically a string letter will be created inside a heap and my variable will store the address space of uh, this string literal, uh, which is presented by this arrow here. So inside the dictionary, I have the variable and address associated with the variable that is pointing at, okay? And possibly there are some other objects floating in the heap, which may or may not be uh, referenced by um, other variable names, okay? So greeting is a variable of type string a string of characters. So we can quickly check the type of uh, variables by typing type greeting and it tells me it's class string. So we can confirm this uh, that way. Okay. Um, if you're familiar with some other uh, languages like C or Java, 
uh, Python does not have a data type representing a single character. Uh, so in that instance, you just have to use a string and then just store a single character itself. Uh, but in that sense, you don't really have to have this character specific variable or type uh, in Python uh, anyway. So just use one character string, uh, that will do the trick for you. Okay. And before we progress on with uh, more string stuff, uh, let's just briefly touch on the uh, print function. This is going to be useful for us uh, when we want to print things uh, from our program. So the syntax is very simple. You just have to call the name of the function, which is print, open the bracket, and then whatever you pass in as the parameter, uh, it's going to return you out to the shell. And if you have multiple parameters, you can separate them using comma. Um, <clears throat> so yes, so that's the typical syntax. It needs at least, uh, well, it doesn't need any exp uh, expression, any um, input parameters. Uh, if you just type in print without any input parameters, it's just going to print you nothing. Uh, but it will still occupy uh, a new line. By default, it adds a new line at the end of the print function. So, uh, and then again, I can uh, add some string inside. It's going to print me the string. And finally, you can separate them by comma. Uh, then you will see both strings printed concatenated, but uh, the print function, if you add comma, it will uh, add a space between uh, your e expressions by default. So uh, be wary about that. Okay. So used to generate output in uh, programs. So in shell, we don't have to explicitly call the print function, but if you want to actually display something to the shell when the program is running, uh, then you will have to call the print function inside your program. So those of you asking, how do I get rid of that um, new line at the end? Uh, to show that in action, print hello and print by I will save this in programs testing save okay if I run this um, code uh, I didn't add any like a new line I didn't want them to separate uh, after one another but by default, it will add uh, what we call a new line character. Okay, so it moves on to the next line. So to remove that, you'll have to pass in an argument uh, saying the end of this is by default nothing. Okay, so uh, by default, it will look like this. Okay, so if I run this program again, it will behave the same as before. So it's going to print me by and then hello here, but by removing this, what we call a new line character, new line characters slash n, you have seen uh, the special characters before. Have you? Maybe you'll see some. By running this now, uh, the by has now been concatenated at the end of hello, which means I have removed the end. So if I want some other characters to fill in after I print, then I can add uh, different items inside this uh, end variable like this okay so this is what we call a, a argument so this is what we call a keyword argument um, but we will cover that later when we visit um, file handling and functions okay so we pass that. Let's have a look at some more examples to see how things work. Let's create a program that looks like this. We have a num equals 2401 
and then we create a prefix variable which equals num is print num print prefix num print n is num okay and as you'll expect the output will look like uh, as down below so let's double check that by running this we have 2401 num is 241 or oh, i should have said num is here so n is 241 so we check this uh, that it prints out as expected um, out here apart from this uh, typo uh, that should have been num okay so the next question is we have seen a few different options to create string but uh, which delimiter should we use uh, delimiter is uh, when we reference to which quotation mark that we need to start to create string so recommendation is to use double quote character um, but it's not a strict uh, requirement you can still create strings using um, other delimiters as you prefer um, but this is useful if uh, you want to use a single quote inside a double quote for instance or the other way around as well so here's an example of trying to use a double quote inside a single quote go print i be set right then i can include this double quote inside what's uh, what gets printed out here um, this is possible because if you start a string with one delimiter then everything else that you put inside a string uh, gets uh, interpreted as characters rather than uh, some special oper operation um, so here i started with a single quote then it will interpret all the other characters until it found, finds another single quote to terminate that that is a, a string that you just created so if i want to use a single quote uh, inside a string then i can uh, start the a string with a double quote hello there uh hi i don't know something like this then i can uh, print out a single quote uh, as a string by using double quote to wrap around okay um, the usefulness of using the, the triple delimiters, whether it's single quote or double quote, is that it will also uh, interpret new line characters by default. So uh, let's get rid of this. I create a string, one fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. Here, yeah, like this. And again, if I just run this, it's not going to return me anything in the shell because S is just created. However, S will be inside a namespace, so I can just call S to display what has been created. But this, as you can see, prints everything in single line uh, because it just shows the content of the string rather than actually formatting it as a presentation of the string. So instead of just calling S, what you should do is print S then it will interpret those special characters accordingly. So this will separate out a bunch of lines. And this is what we expected to see. Okay, so that's the uh, difference you should remember. Okay, and of course you can use the triple quotes. Let's do that. Uh, run this. Okay, again, if I just call S, shows me the content of S. If I call print S, it will format it as expected for the string to be displayed okay um, you'll find out quickly that if i just try with a single double quotation mark um, then the editor will flag that as syntax error straight away so that's the one of the difference uh, with uh, using the triple delimiter, delimiter compared to a single delimiter Okay, so remember that one and finally if I want to use 
a both double quote and single quote inside a string. We can do that. Uh, hello there. And then I want to put double quote. So if I just add double quote around the string like this, then what's happening is that the second uh, double quote has been matched with the first one, but I don't want that to be matched with the first one. I want the last one to be matched. So what we need to do is add a backslash in front of this, which indicates that a backslash in Python or many of the other language means escape. So this means rather than being considered as a special character, it's going to be treated as normal string character. So same with the second one here. And then I can say, say it, uh, James Sun, something like that. Right? So now, as you can see, there are no red squiggly lines indicating there's a syntax error. So I can run this <coughs> and print S. Then I can have both double quote and single quote inside my string. Okay. So that's the string. If you want to write it onto the multiple lines, you must use uh, triple quotes or you can manually insert new line characters uh, into your string and that also works. Just a quick note on statement termination. Uh, Python do allow a statement to be um, written over multiple lines and there are two um, cases where these are allowed. One is using the brackets. Okay, so until the closing bracket is found, you can map out a statement onto multiple lines. And the other one is by breaking the line using escape. So if I use the escape, that means uh, this line continues on the next one. So let's quickly check. Cost equals 23.5 times, I can press enter, uh, 36 close bracket. And that's fine, no error is given. So if I check cost, it will give me the answer that it should have. Okay, same with uh, the backslash cost equals 23.5 times backslash can go anywhere and then 36. So even at the shell, uh, it understands that uh, doing the backslash is continuing on the next line. So I can check this again, it is correct. Um, but do note that you don't normally write codes like this. Um, they are ugly and even uglier. So try not to do that. I know you wouldn't, but yeah. So we have seen some special characters like new line character, with, which allows you to put strings onto multiple lines. And these are what we call a special characters, which can be inserted using the backslash and the command for the special character. So here we've seen the one fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish before. And when we just call the string, uh, it just displays the content of it. But uh, if you print it, then it properly formats it, right? So that slash n is indicating that insert a new line at this, at this point. And not only the new lines, you can, add, uh, you can add other special characters, including the tabs, single quote, double quote, uh, hexadecimal values, and even the backslash. Okay? So do read some um, documentations for it if you uh, are a little bit confused, but hopefully this is uh, straightforward for you. So moving on, now we can do some operations on strings. And similar to uh, numbers, strings do have some uh, operations that you can apply. And there are three arithmetic operators. Okay. So first one is plus. And when you do plus, what it does is it just puts the strings together. It's a concatenation. Okay. So both um, <coughs> uh, the the input for the pluses have to be strings. Okay? So I can do something like uh, my string equals hello plus by, okay? 
And then if I call my string, it shows me hello by concatenate together. I didn't include any um, spaces, that's why there's no space between. Okay, and if you try to do plus with some other types like numbers, then it's going to complain and show you an error because a string cannot be added with an integer. But then again, we know how to convert um, types by using the um, built-in function. So here, I can create string out of this integer value. Then it's not going to complain because what it does is convert 54 into a string format first, then I can add string with another string. So if I check the content of my string now, then it's hello 54. So that's expected uh, result um, uh, with that equation. Okay. So the next item is multiplication. Uh, multiplication in string means uh, you want to repeat this string uh, that many times. So the two inputs you, you need for multiplication in string is a string and an integer. So those two are the only ones that you can work with. So let's try again. Uh, <coughs> repeated equals hello multiplied by five. Okay, so no error, that's fine. Let's check repeated content. It uh, repeats the string hello five times. And if I try to multiply by a float, it's going to complain that there's a type error. Uh, if I want to multiply with another string, then it's going to complain again. You can't multiply string by string. It doesn't make sense. Okay. Next item is uh, the percentage signs. For, for numeric types like integers, a percentage sign means um, the modulus operation where remainders are calculated and displayed. In string, it's a string format um, operation, which means I can insert other variable types into a string and display that. Uh, left operand must be a string, right uh, operand a value or a tuple. However, this is an old style of formatting strings in Python and we don't really use that anymore. Uh, Python has now released a better version of using format. So we'll be using string format method instead, uh, which we will see later when we cover string methods. Okay. Uh, other string operations need indexing and method calls, uh, so uh, we will go over them as we move along when we cover lists. Okay. So let's concatenate some strings. Uh, we already seen some examples, but let's do a few more. Okay. Word equals hi. Okay. And we probably don't really have to go over the example for this one. So print word plus there is going to put the word hi here and then concatenate it together uh, without any space. So you can forcefully insert space by adding a, a space into the equation. Alternatively, you can just add a space before there, then you will only need two arguments for this print function. Okay. And now we have a variable called count and then print count is here is the conversion of integer to a string okay and you can actually put other data types here as well for example floats can be converted to string and so forth as long as uh, things can be converted to string okay so we have seen that without the string it's going to throw an error where a string cannot be added with an integer Okay. So here is a few more examples, but I will let you uh, explore that uh, on your own time. And output's already there, so that should be quite straightforward uh, why such thing is happening. The next item is the input function. So normally, a user would like to interact with programs, um, and then they have to provide some commands uh, through keyboards or mouse clicks or whatever. Um, in this unit, we don't really cover GUI stuff, um, so we will have a look at uh, interaction through the keyboard uh, using the input function. Okay. So what the input function do is it displays a, a cursor where user can enter uh, from the keyboard and then it's going to store that into a variable if you have assigned a variable 
uh, in the equation. So for example, here I said name equals. So I'm creating a variable called name and uh, on the right hand side we have input. So this means whatever I type inside uh, on the program in the shell, this string will be saved in name. So let's give it a go. Name equals input. What is your name space? Enter. So here it prompts me what is your name and you can see the cursor, uh, cursor blinking. So here I can type stuff, right? Frank. And then I press enter to indicate that I have finished inputting uh, in the shell. It has completed and the variable name should now be inside my dictionary. So if I can access name, it has stored uh, what I have inputted through the keyboard, Frank. And whatever you type in, uh, by default, it will be stored as string. So if you know your input will be expected as numbers, then you can convert them uh, into different types using um, uh, built-in functions like int or float, etc. So here's um, an example. Age as string is input, how old are you? And then some you are expecting them to type in an integer. Then you can convert that uh, as an int uh, and then store it into an age straight away. And of course, you can combine uh, the functions because essentially this is a one function and as the output of that uh, is used inside this function. So I can encapsulate the input function inside an int uh, if I know that they will be typing number um, as expected. Uh, but do uh, remember that if you are expecting a number but the user mistakenly type a non-numeric value, then this will give you an error because int cannot convert um, other non-numbered um, characters. Okay. And last for this video, objects. Uh, we've seen that everything in Python is objects. So I've been mentioning about uh, these are objects and whatnot. Uh, from uh, when we did started with the introduction to Python video. And basically, everything is stored as objects uh, in Python. Uh, Python is an object-oriented programming. Um, and each object will contain data, uh, the value for int and float objects, a sequence of characters for string objects, the Python code for the function objects, etc. Um, so, at this moment, all you have to remember is that everything is stored as an object in Python and each object uh, we can access uh, different aspects, things like the values, the characters, the code, and so forth, right? So just get this concept um, in mind, uh, which will help you when we cover uh, like the lists, dictionaries, sets, uh, and so forth uh, later on. Well, that's it for this particular video. We have covered the very basics of the string and how to use it. In the next one, we'll be looking at string methods and um, what are we looking at? Formatting. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.